In this presentation, we're going to discuss about process termination. Terminating a process. This is more or less from the MSDN documentation. Any remaining threads in the process are marked for termination. Any resources allocated by the process are freed. All kernel objects are closed. All the DLLs are removed from the memory. That is what is meant by process code. The process exit code is set and process object is signal so if, if anyone is waiting for that process to terminate they will get that signal of the process object so these are the ways in which a process is terminated any thread of the process calls exit process so this is one of the ways to terminate process from inside inside the same process a last the last thread of the process terminates that is another reason for a process to terminate so for example in the case of a hello world application your main returns then the process is terminated that is again a graceful termination any thread calls terminate process function with a handle to the process so terminate process is a non-graceful termination of a process mostly from other processes for example if you right click on a process from task manager and kill process terminate process is what is happening so it is unexpected for the process which is being terminated for the console process the con host is there the con host is to be terminated the console control handler comes in the picture Control C or Control Break in a console also has the same effect of terminating a console process. As you might already know, when the user shut down the system or logs off, a lot of processes are terminated. Nothing much different from what we have seen so far. Just call terminate process, exit process, etc. So have you ever wondered what happens to the value we return from a main function in a C program? So that is what is called exit process code or process exit code. So how to get this? The function is get process exit code. This function uh, returns immediately. So it doesn't wait for the process to terminate and get the exit code. If the process has not terminated and the function succeeds, the status returned is still active. So the process is alive or if it is active, we will get a still underscore active. If the process has terminated and the function succeeds, the status returned is one of the following values. So this is again from MSDN. So it is pretty much a value you are passing in exit process or terminate process or a return value from main or in main. So basically um, the CRT library which calls the main or in main whatever it is calling nothing but exit process in the end so it is the value we are passing to the exit process which is coming in the exit code so exit process is the api which is responsible for that in certain scenarios if the process is terminating with an exception the value for that unhandled exception that caused the process to terminate will come in the exit code so that is the exception scenario so the exception handler pretty much calls exit process again 
with a, a different value which is related to the exception. This exit process call is very useful in scripting and things like that. When you execute a process from command line to know the result if that particular action or the task has completed successfully this particular exit process code is used. Now let's try to understand what exactly happens when a process terminated. Let's see a couple of examples. We did an M malloc. We have allocated a chunk of memory dynamically in our program. So what happens to that memory if we don't call free? Good programming practice is to call free. But what if we don't call free? If we don't call free when the process exits, that memory is freed by the operating system. We don't have to worry about that. We did a file open, but we didn't close it. We have written something to the file using fwrite. What happens? That fwrite will succeed provided we are not killing the process in the middle of fwrite. In that case, it's a different scenario. fwrite has returned the handle of the file or the file object will get closed and it will flush all the buffers into the file. Now you have created a window from a process. So that window is another handle. When the handle is getting closed, the window will disappear. So when a process dies, the windows created by that process will die as well. You created a registry key. So that registry key is in the secondary memory anyway. It's in the disk. So that registry key stays there when the process dies. It won't go. You have done some modification to a database. It'll be there. You copied something from a notepad and killed the notepad before pasting it somewhere it also stays. So the data you copied is in, is in the clipboard which is mostly in the kernel memory. It's part of the kernel memory kept by Win32k.sys. So it is there in the in your clipboard. So even after killing the notepad that copied data is there and you can paste it in anywhere else you want. So what is a thumb rule? So what are the things goes, what are the things stays? Anything in the process side of space gets cleaned up. So the user mod part of the outer space is getting cleaned up. Memory, pep, tap, everything is cleaned up. Handles are closed, which means that if the handle count becomes zero in the kernel for the handles, the object is also cleaned up from the kernel. So that is up to the kernel, depends on your handle count. If there are so many handles open from other processes of the same object, the object is not getting cleaned up. When the process is terminated, the handles opened by that process is closed. How a process can resist termination, even from task manager? couple of ways are there. Pending IRP. If you pend an IRP, if, if an IO is pending on a thread, kernel won't terminate that thread. Suspend a process. There are ways to terminate a process even if it's suspended. But the idea is uh, even the terminate process need uh, some execution of code inside the process at a space to terminate that process. So suspending a process is trying to do that not allowing anyone to execute any code in the other space. Attach debugger. So same, pretty much the same uh, scenario. If a debugger is attached, you cannot terminate a process because debugger won't let anyone else to execute code inside the other space of that process. If you have a driver, you have a lot of ways you can resist the termination of a process. Coming to the summary, we have seen process termination and a resource cleanup. That's about the presentation. Now, reviews, comments, and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. 
So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now, if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings. All services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.